Hi guys, Ace is up here. Just woke up. Uh, well, not just. Uh, I uh, don't think it's a good idea just to wake up and just start playing. Uh, roll out of bed and just fire up 20 tables. I usually find I start off very sluggish when I do that. And uh, I feel kind of under the pump from the start with decision making. And it's just sort of... I just think it's a way to get off... You know, get, just start a session on the wrong foot. So I had some food and a couple of jelly beans. Uh, bought some jelly beans yesterday. Uh, once I start eating them, though, I can't stop. But I don't want to <laughs> have too much sugar. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts. You can probably tell by my speaking that I'm a little bit... Uh, um, I had a pretty good sleep, though. But the problem is, is that I did have a couple of days off, <clears throat> uh, as you know, and... Uh, I just uh, sort of find that my schedule, you know, I sleep in a little bit, get some extra rest, and my schedule just gets pushed back. It's very hard, I find, personally, to maintain a schedule where you're playing through the night, sort of on a night shift, especially when you take a couple of days off or if you're tired and so forth. Uh, so, you know, it's it's not kind of ideal that if you're trying to get uh, play all the good tournaments, then uh, we probably, you know, it's 4 a.m. here now, 10 past 4. Probably playing from sort of 11 a.m.-ish, midnight uh, is good, and that's the schedule that I started off on. Uh, that schedule's come back a bit now, uh, which is okay. I mean, it's still good for, very good for ROI and finding soft tournaments. It's fantastic, but uh, in terms of actually playing some of the bigger tournaments and there is this uh event coming up the the carnival is that what it's called i don't even know but it's got a picture of a ferris wheel so it looks like a carnival <laughs> on poker stars uh it's got some bigger prize pools and also f-tops is coming up as well uh so let me just make sure i'm not missing any of those f-tops because sometimes i don't think they have quite started yet where are they oh here they are yeah okay that starts in december and, uh, you know, full tilt poker is just one of those things where I don't run that well there. Uh, never have. I always feel like I'm running below EV and losing my all-ins. Uh, so it's some sort of curse that I have on full tilt that one day I'm hoping to break. Uh, and I've always said that I think I'm going to break that curse by winning an F-tops. And it's just going to turn the whole thing around. Uh, and, <laughs> and I may attempt to just do that, this F-tops. Good chance that uh, we, you know, now that we've built our bankroll up sufficiently, we do play some of those tournaments because they do have pretty good prize pools. But uh, focusing on today, <clears throat> now I'm just hoping with my, uh, I need to splash some water on my face or something, I think, but <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I looked at a little bit of training video, you know, just glanced at some training stuff and, uh, yeah, I mean, I had breakfast and, uh, bar going outside into the minus two temperature or whatever it is and walking around for a bit uh, I think I'm about as ready as I'm ever going to be this morning so hopefully my decisions are, are still uh, you know kind of sharp and uh, so just looking through what we've got to register in here what I might actually do and what is probably smart which is what I normally don't do is I might just start registering from down a bit and I might start selecting a whole lot of tournaments that we can play uh, from down here work our way up uh, by the way you know Omaha if you're familiar with Omaha I mean that can be Omaha can be a good uh, can be good to play uh, the reason why I don't play it is because mostly I play high low <clears throat> and sometimes I actually look at an Omaha table and think I'm playing high low <coughs> or vice versa if I'm playing a lot of Omaha as well so Obviously, it's not going to be good for EV. <laughs> so, just to keep it simple, uh, I miss out on the Omaha tournaments and just so I know if I'm playing Omaha, it's high low. Uh, probably sounds a bit silly, but hey, sometimes uh, you know you have these tendencies, so got to be aware of them. And, uh, you know, I just found I was making mistakes when I was playing both, sometimes rushing decisions, thinking it was high and it's low and whatever. Um, 
So the thing about today is it is Wednesday evening in most countries. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> and uh, that means that uh, it's going to be uh, what I would consider one of the tougher days. Having said that, we're still focusing on good value tournaments that are going to be pretty soft. Uh, I did play the 44. It's been running for 28 minutes. Uh, it's a little bit loose. Uh, if you're going to be strict, uh, you know, $44. I mean, it's certainly obviously well within our role, but it has been running for 28 minutes and it's a turbo. And uh, you know my, my, my feelings about that. And the same with the rebuy. Uh, rebuys are a little bit different, um, you know. But let, what we want to do here is just have a little check and have a, a look and uh, see the field. Uh, so you can see the the boxes there are the players that I've noted. And what we're really looking out for is light blues and dark blues and I guess greens. You know, so if we skim down. Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy's very good. Uh, Celtic is good. Vinky is good. This guy's good. Elia's good. Yeah, Master Felipe, Polo, 69. Uh, MJ, oh no, it's not MJW, I thought it was. Oh my God, it's Hunt, my main nemesis. Uh, yeah, these guys are all very good. And then there's a few guys that are, you know, uh, you'd rather not be in there as well that play quite good, like... Uh, Sack Attack and Tranquil Mind. I think this Sinjay guy, I can't remember. I think we played against him a bit recently, right? I think he was okay. Uh, who else? Decent. Yeah, BR Rolls is not too bad. Ariel BR. Uh, oh, Burgeru. He's in there. He's good. Um, yeah, so the Pinau's okay. Yeah, so I mean, this Simus guy, I think he's not too bad either. So when you're looking at a tournament like this and you're seeing these names that you know and, and not a lot of boxes that actually my, my milk cans is I play, we played against that player a bit I, and Bulbasaur I think as well I should have more notes on these guys uh, and so you're looking at a tournament like this and you're saying well you played against all guys so they're very likely at least regs or semi regs <clears throat> so how much value is really in this tournament you know uh, that's the that's the question that you got to ask yourself you're going to be fighting very hard for several hours for a chance at two thousand dollars with a whole bunch of regs. Uh, who want that money just as bad as you most likely. So I think that we can, uh, you know, I mean, I think this is a profitable tournament for us to play, but, uh, you know, it's certainly not going to be a fist pump. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot of purples and stuff and players we don't have notes on. If you yellows. Uh, and, you know, I might have missed a few guys here and there that, you know, um, are, are good players, you know, uh, so I think it's pretty close. Uh, it's certainly not that bad. I mean, normally a, a tournament like a like a two fifteen turbo midweek is going to be much worse than that. But um, I think that oh, this guy's just bet pretty big, hasn't he? So I'm going to register for it. But um, <clears throat> I just want to sort of take you through a process there that you can run through. <clears throat> and uh, you know, you've heard me talk about game selection a lot, so. Um, I mean, if you compare that to this $11 tournament, and this will make it fairly obvious, uh, you can see that. I mean, look at this sparse, you know, how, how few notes I have. You know, all these guys are, are guys I don't have noted, which probably means they're just, you know, uh, just kind of mostly randoms or you know, just play small stuff and donk around sort of stuff. So, you know, that that's going to be, you know, if we get an ROI of... Uh, no, ten dollars goes in the prize pool. So, if we get an ROI of uh, on that, well, I think they worked the ROI after full buy-in, right? So, if we get say just a ROI of in this tournament of like forty percent, let's say, it'd be four dollars forty, uh, and then in the three dollar in the thirty-three rebuy, we spend um, well, let's just say most players spend about a hundred bucks, and we get like a five percent ROI. I guess that's going to be uh, five dollars <throat> but with a lot more variance um, and so that's one way that you might look at it or might sort of think about it it's a very crude sort of calculation but 
Uh, you might say that these tournaments actually represent similar EV, the 33 rebuy in this in this tournament with the $11, just because on the one tournament you're going to have a lower ROI, even though it's a bigger buy-in. But uh, the other one, you well, in the case of the smaller buy-in, you know you can have a much higher higher ROI because the players are much softer, uh, and it uh, almost makes it uh, you know just as good as the bigger buy-ins. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, that uh, dirty word variance, you know, a lot less variance. Uh, in the $11 tournament, you can expect to cash a lot more and, and just in general get a lot more results. Uh, and in the $33 up, with more tougher players in there, you know, you might go on streaks where you, you bust and coolers and, you know, make mistakes or whatever from time to time because you're playing against better players and they might, uh, you know, just play well. So it's certainly... You know, you want to keep that in mind when you're registering. And uh, I'm really trying to. I really don't know what this guy's repping. I guess he's got like eights or nines, and maybe he just decides he's good. It'd be a pretty ridiculous race to make with a set. Um, so I am just going to fold. Probably just protecting, I guess, like a maniac. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get just a few things that I think about in terms of, you know, when. I was talking about the waking up before, uh, you know, when you first wake up, you know, you've got to approach these sessions like it's your job and I'm sure your boss wouldn't be too happy if you just sort of slept in the office and just woke up and, you know, put uh, your gunner's eyewear on and just started staring at the screen blankly sort of trying to wake up your brain and start doing work. Um, like to see you coming in fresh and ready to go and that's the way it should be with poker. And then uh, just applying a little bit of uh, uh, you know, game selection in terms of uh, the lineup and the buy-ins and uh, thinking about poker and I guess as a business a little bit more holistically uh, thinking about it, how we're going to make money today, <clears throat> how we're going to make the right investments. <clears throat> it's uh, Sometimes it does sort of have a lot of similarities to the stock market or investing and that sort of thing. So. Anyway, um, let's continue to load up tables and uh, put our game face on and see how we go here. Uh, 22 1 rebuy, 1 add on. Now, this is a tournament that is pretty good value. How do we bet here? Can we bet here? It's pretty close, actually. I think maybe we should not. <clears throat> oh, that's why the table's like that. I hadn't actually started stacking tile. I was just thinking to myself, like, well, what's going on here? It's got stack and tile on, but that's much better. Well, now he bombs, so he's trying to tell us he has a four. Is this correct, sir? Do you have a four? I just don't know how often a player is just going to double pot river as a bluff. I think most 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 players just bets. You know, if they're going to bluff, they're just going to bet like close to pot. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it could be a bluff definitely, but we have to be right a decent percentage of the time. I I think uh, I kind of feel like it should be a call just based on the fact that you know we're pretty strong for the way the hand has been played, but. <clears throat> Spidey senses are tingling and so sort of telling me that, you know, some random guy double potting river, I mean, could be a bluff, but I just don't, don't feel that it is. Um, it looked like a bet designed to kind of look like a bluff. Uh, but, you know, you got to ask yourself with a bit of metagame, you know, why would he be betting that size? Everyone's looks pretty weak. He's probably just stealing, but yeah, I don't know. I'll let that one go. <clears throat> and top middle, you know, just pot controlled with the king jack there. <clears throat> Definitely don't want a donk lead turn. I almost, for some reason, just started thinking about donk leading, but uh, that's not good. That's not good. <clears throat> His queen. No information on opponent. 
just going to call. And uh, definitely want to play very aggressively today. I feel that uh, I really want to play very aggressive today because uh, it's a bit of a mind game with poker. And we had a good score recently. And the session after that, I felt very drained and flat. And uh, felt that I wasn't playing that well. And uh, I think one sort of thing you can do is just go crazy with the aggression and just be a maniac. And it can really sort of... It can lead to you making a few mistakes and perhaps at times unnecessary moves, but I think it's actually kind of good to get you zoned in because you're putting yourself in lots of uncomfortable situations and, you know, really mixing it up. And I think that's a great way to, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to fold top right there. I think it's a great way to really try and get you back on track and playing good poker. And uh, sometimes I actually literally make the rule that I will... I have to three bet every single time the player is not in first or second position. So every time they're not in the traditional early position, which is really UTG and UTG plus one, once we get around to uh, sort of the third position, you know, it's more of a traditional, what we would consider mid middle position. Um, And uh, although some, some literature might still consider it to be, you know, early. I mean, it's still early-ish, obviously, but 6-7 uh, suited. <laughs> yeah. I think I rolled. It's a little bit awkward here, because, like, if we make it 180, he calls... It's 360 already in there, and we only have uh, uh, 13, 13 ish. You know, there's the thing about these. Uh, you know, I really hate this 15, 1500 start bank. I do think you actually have to play. A little, ooh, I do think you actually have to play a little bit tighter with this bank. Uh, one sec here, guys. Yeah, I think you have to play a little bit tighter with the uh, 1500 stat bank, uh, a little bit more ABC. You can't afford to get too funky like you can with a 3K stat bank. I really like the 3K stat bank. I think it's really well suited to starting off pretty aggressively because you've got enough depth of stack to maneuver, but at the same time, you're not crazy deep that you actually don't threaten anyone with your play. Uh, so personally, that's what I find works for me is, well, 12, 24, 36. So it's over a 3x from small blind. I think I'm just going to let that go. Uh, yeah, so what I'm really saying is it's, it's like kind of like a sit and go. You know, sit and goes, you don't start super deep. And a lot of the times in the sit and go, it's, it's good just to start off kind of tight. You know, in tournaments, I normally like to start off, uh, you know, pretty aggressive compared to the norm and I think that a 3k start bank is really good for that but on the other hand you know when you've got 10k uh, you, again you're kind of so deep again that you don't need to because you just have so much time where you're just going to find such good uh, situations and uh, 10k start banks that's actually what you normally start with in sites like uh, well, actually, .fr, you start with 10k start bank, but the, the I guess the blinds are a little bit bigger, though, so it kind of compensates. But I do feel you, it's a bit of a, it's, it's a bit better structured in those tournaments. Uh, if anyone plays PokerStars.fr, that's the, obviously the French site. And I think, you know, a little sort of weaker players there as well, so you don't really need to, to do, get too fancy because you normally find pretty good spots. Uh, but I think that... Uh, in general, stars tournament where you start with 3k, you don't have a lot of time. You know, you don't have that many hands, uh, and uh, you got that opportunity at the start where you got a little bit of depth to play with. <clears throat> you want to make the most of it because uh, those blinds go up quick. And uh, you've heard me say it before. You know, a few people say that tournament a tournament is a marathon. Completely disagree. Uh, a tournament is just a crazy sprint to the finish line. 
uh, and uh, you know, you only get 400 hands or 600 hands or whatever it's going to be, you know. Uh, so how many times are you going to get aces? You know, maybe twice. Um, and if you're lucky, uh, and you just don't have time, you know, you, you know. And you're going to get aces twice, and you might not get any action, or you might get bad beat. Uh, you know, how are you going to make it work? You know, you're going to have to use five seven suited. You're going to have to use the old king eight suited. Uh, you're going to have to use any dirty tactics you can to try to accumulate a lot of chips in this sprint to the finish line because well, there's a lot of players in this tournament and we need to get every single chip. It's not an easy thing to do to get every single chip in play and uh, we're not going to do it by playing like a nit. So, or at least I never have. Uh, I think I've had one tournament, I said it before, I've got one tournament in my entire life of playing, I think I've played about 30,000 tournaments in my life. Uh, and uh, I would say I've had one tournament that I won where I didn't have to do anything outside the box. I don't have to think. I, I could have just sat a monkey there playing and said, do this, play good hands, and they would have won. You know, most of the time there's, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's maneuvering, you know, there's, there's wielding the stack and getting leverage. And, uh, you know, this uh, top left with the ace-eight and this queen-jack are both pretty tough spots where we could go either way, I think, on this spot. <clears throat> I think I will raise this one. Uh, it's pretty close. You could flat with it too, I think. But And this one up here, I'm kind of not too sure about, 6 12 in, because this guy's not too, not too, too loose. Uh... And he's probably raising about, though he's probably raising about 20% based on the information we have from here. So attacking with the ace 8 here is not too bad against a 20% range. If we have a little peekaboo at that in Equilab. <clears throat> Just to give you an idea what we're talking about here, you know, 20% is going to look something like that. You know, so uh, I think he's going to be folding, likely folding, sort of. Uh, this. Maybe if it doesn't fold that, not sure. <clears throat> so we've got him folding. Yeah. I mean, we've got him folding maybe 8%. Uh, and then once we see that and we're in position with the stack depth, I think, I think it's pretty close in terms of immediate profit. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty close in terms of immediate profit based on how much he's folding. I mean, obviously he needs to fold more than that for it to be profitable. And we just bring it back up, uh, for a minute here and just have a look at it. I'm just going to pop it up there for a sec. Uh, and say <clears throat> we raise 169 calc open we raise 169 um, king 5 off I think I'm not going to 3 bet this guy here but I think if I was suited I would uh, calling is not too bad either with king five suited, I guess, but. Okay, calculator's hiding. Where is it? There it is. Somehow it got over there. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, 125, I think, sounds good. We've got the ladies down there. So we risked 169 to win. Uh, I'm going to open a second calc and just do this. Just do it mm, this way. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to raise here. This is a pretty big raise, uh, but, you know, I just think we can't, especially after my speech about tournaments being a sprint, we're not going to uh, flat here. But, you know, it's kind of a big open, 3.3x uh, and... I think flooding is not that bad, but 
I don't have any notes on this guy. It's a $13 buy-in. I mean, he's probably just a massive donkey. So I really, uh, I really think we just need to go for value. And, uh, you know, this is the sort of flop we wanted. If he's got 10s or jacks, he's not folding, you know. Uh, he would have re-raised, I think, with aces or kings, especially three-way. I don't think he's going to get that trappy. Guy behind, I guess, once in a while, you know, could be trapping. Um, and so now I'm just going to caress the pot, uh, like some tender breasts. And I think that uh, the guy behind is probably going to have tens or jacks a lot. A little bit worried someone has nines and, you know, sevens, I guess, as well, but just so be it. Eights and, you know, I mean, this guy could even call with, you know, sixes, eights and stuff like that, so. Uh, it's kind of tough here, uh, I think. We're never going to check, I guess, but I was just thinking if we want to try and get the money in with two bets or one. I guess one. There's a couple of reasons why we might just go for, for the for the one. Wow, I, I didn't expect the four nine. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect the four nine off. Uh, but that's kind of what I was saying about you know he's probably <laughs> he's probably not a top pro. Uh, so three points <laughs> two points fix with four nine off. And, uh, 3x with 4, 9, off, and call 3 bet. Uh, call 3 bet out of position. Mm, he was about mid-ish, right? Okay, awesome. And what color are we going to use there? Uh, pro? Top pro color? Nitty reg. <laughs> Nitty reg. Let's give him the special. And uh, we're all in there. So, uh, you know, that is um, that is the value of a $13.75 tournament. You've got a guy playing 4-9 off, raising 3.3x, calling three bets out of position. Uh, and uh, I think it's fair to assume that had he flopped any pair on a low board like that, he's going to stack off. So... But just going back to that turn bet, uh, if we think that he might be able to sometimes fold a hand like you know, sixes or those smaller pairs, then maybe we just can bet bet turn uh, and then get it all in on the river. But most guys like that, you know, are not going to fold those hands. And if you do just bet and he calls in the river is a really bad card, like an ace or something, now he might actually be able to escape. Uh, and so... You know, it's most of the time, well, in general, it's better just to, uh, you know, just to go for it on the turn, I think. Uh, the SPR was close enough to one where it was a pot size-ish bet and not some sort of ridiculous overjam. I think if I had a spade here, I might peel or even check raise. Uh, but I just think with the presence of the two spades and the fact that we don't have one, and we do have the guts, are obviously, and a, a jack or nine could be good, but I think I'm just going to uh, fold there. <clears throat> this guy's been splashing around a bit too, and it does show that he's got some aggression post-flop. So I don't really want to go into check call mode out of position and play, well, you know, that could be defined as losing poker, check calling out of position. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think I will raise this one. And uh, this is kind of an interesting dynamic could develop here where this guy's loose, but he might be aware that we know that he's loose. Uh, and having said that, he snap holds. Uh, but yeah, I think that dynamic could come up where a bit of metagame where he goes, okay, you're three betting me again. Uh, in this, I mean, we've only three bet him twice now, uh, but we have only played 40 hands. So uh, if we three bet him, you know, through third and fourth time, which I'm sure we will soon. At some point, he's going to probably say, okay, you're three-betting me, I think, light, and I, I might just pop you with a four-bet. And, uh, you know, that's always fun when that happens, when it gets to that level. Um, if it does, I mean, he might not adjust. He might have a very set strategy. 
where he thinks you can just open a lot and get away with it, and when he gets resistance, uh, he folds. But uh, I think that he's four bet plus after raising is 11% at the moment, two of 19, so it's kind of high. And uh, I think he could be the sort of player that uh, could try something. So just keep our eyes out for that. <clears throat> could be some crazy deep all in soon with pocket threes. Top left, we've got a guy who's been tight, but we only have 26 hands. So about three orbits, but he hasn't actually opened yet. It's the first time he's actually raised. Uh, he has defended one big blind. So he's only played one hand in 26, and it was a big blind defend. And so I'm treading pretty carefully. Uh, you know, I think... If the stacks were a bit more shallow, I, I, we could maybe do something on the heart and potentially turn our hand into a bluff, but um, I think calling the turn is very close. I think it's, if his stats are, tr are kind of you know genuine, I think we can actually fold turn, but I think that players have a tendency just to be betting because someone's checking at this level. Like they're just like, oh, he's, he's checking, so I'm betting. And they're not really thinking too much about flop texture or what you have, they're just betting. Uh, I don't have any notes on him and no hand, no history, so that's why I'm just kind of lumping him in that sort of potential big fish basket. And uh, he was kind of doing that. Well, I mean, not so much. He had pocket twos. He had pocket twos, so I don't mind his turn barrel. I don't think it's that bad because we can have, uh, you know, we can have a lot of sort of middling pairs and stuff. <clears throat> Uh, just trying to think how we're going to do this. We're going to start quite small here. Uh, it's going to be pretty polarizing, this line we take, I think. I'm probably going to bet, bet, bet. Uh, and uh, uh, we're only really repping, well, close to just a queen, but if we bet four now and he calls, he'll have 2,000 and there'll be almost 2,000 in there. So I'm going to bet 409. I'm at 412. Uh, I'm just trying to fold out like if he has eights or something. <clears throat> uh, you know, it's going to be a bit risky because he can have queens here a lot. Well, is he going to fold eights? That's such a bad river card. It could have been a 10, a jack. He's obviously a club ace or king. I'm just thinking if we can get him to fold eights here. Nines, tens. I wonder if Norma Jean folds those hands. It still could have a queen, of course. I mean, that's obviously possible as well. I think that I might actually check here. I think that between the chance that they actually have a queen or potentially that they're just not folding, you know, they might just snap our face off with nines. And, you know, they have jacks. So, um, and they snap check the river. I think he was on, I think he was on call check, uh, you know, uh, check or call any. <clears throat> uh, is that a, even a button? I just made that up, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know if they have that button. Yeah, they should have it. Uh, yeah, so, I mean... Uh, I'd be pretty surprised if he's folding there because he's so high up in his range. I mean, just think that he's going to have to call down with that hand and just if we happen to have a queen or aces or something, just hate life. Uh, I would have played aces or, or kings the same way and gone for three streets and just barreled. Um, and uh, obviously that was sort of when he doesn't four bet pre. <clears throat> we don't really think he's going to be... I mean, he could be trapping, but most of the time he's not going to be so... Um, <clears throat> I think that it was, uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, he was top of his range, he wasn't folding and, um, uh, it was all go always going to be a bit of worry that, that he, uh, had a, a bigger pair or a queen, but, uh, he would have four bet, you know, we presume with, Aces and kings, and uh, you know, even with jacks, that must have been pretty close for him. Uh, but I think at this stack depth and in position, 
uh, I think just calling on the way he played it was quite good. Uh, especially if he thinks we have a tendency to barrel and which we kind of do, but it's lucky the river wasn't a jack <laughs> because I probably would have uh, river jack. I probably would have shoved. I think an ace king ten club for jack. Maybe a queen as well, which would be pretty sick. <laughs> Maybe a queen as well. But I just think if we queen comes and we jam, like, it's such a retarded spot to bluff. Because, you know, he knows that we know he has a pair. Uh, and because that he knows we know, it, it just looks like we would never, ever bluff, you know, in that spot. If the river's a queen, it looks like we must have aces, kings, or uh, maybe quads or a jack. Um, and I just don't think, or jacks, I should say, and... Uh, I actually think it's one of those spots where you're repping extremely thin, but well, not extremely thin, but we're repping pretty thin. But our, you know, his hand is pretty face up, and it's a hand that I think he thinks we think is going to call, and therefore we can't be bluffing. One of those types of spots. Uh, this is pretty annoying again. You know, he he doesn't defend that wide, so I mean, he, he does have a lot of aces in his range. Uh, he could just do. We just get there? Did we just get there? Uh, he could have a an eight as well. Uh, I'm just trying to think. What? Or how do we want to bet here? If we bet very big, I'm just trying to think if it's worth doing trying something here. I I think I'm just. Well, I, I'm thinking. I'm just going to bet like a th an amount that I think an ace always will call. You know. Uh, Okay. I was thinking about betting, you know, over pot, trying to make it look like a bluff, because I might do that with uh, as a bluff some of the time. I might bet like one and a half times pot, because I think it's pretty hard for like a sex to call. Uh, if we bet one and a half or two times pot, I was thinking about doing it with the nuts. <clears throat> I think it was a little bit kind of overly tricky, and I think, yeah, but I mean, I think it works a lot. It works a lot. As a bluff, I, I think he thinks in that spot, if we like double pot river, he's like, ha, you think I have an ace and I'm going to call you. Well, I'm not going to call because I think you're trying to make it look like you're bluffing and you're actually backed into a hand like two pair with jack queen, the straight with king 10, nine 10, etc. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is good. This is good because we, we're using our brain. <clears throat> Uh, and that's always <laughs> that's always a good thing, but uh, we are you know, thinking outside the box and mixing it up a bit, and uh, you know that's good. This is I feel like it's a pretty good start to the session because uh, you know we're 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 trying to find ways to win. That's what we need to be doing. Yeah, I didn't register, I don't know if you guys noticed before, I didn't play the big 109. It had already been running, I think, for one hour and eight minutes, I think. And uh, I'm going to try and stay pretty disciplined and not do the late regging and that sort of thing. Um, well, I mean, I will with some the smaller binds because our edge is so significant anyway that, you know, even if we come in late, I think it doesn't matter. But the big 109 is a tournament that I think I prefer to be there at least within the first hour, so... Uh, I'm just going to mix in some of these little uh, full tilties. Little full tilties. Pop them in. It's a Wednesday War. $13. $26 hours. Just started. Triceratops. Yep. You know, I just have to try to win a full tilt tournament, you know. It's, uh, I just keep getting these big stacks lately and then busting just short of the final table or whatever, and it's just, uh, have to put an end to it. You know, this site, and I just have this, it's not even a love-hate, it's just a hate-hate relationship. Uh... Let's 
six. Yeah, I think I'm gonna dunk bed here. Am I gonna dunk bed here? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna dunk bed here. And, uh... Could get four bed here. This is kind of the spot I was talking about before. <clears throat> and uh, kind of hoping for here, obviously. If he clicks it back to sort of 900-ish, you know, then... Uh, I think normally against Dongbet's players, I'm going to call pretty wide, and so I'm definitely going to fire again here. Uh, and he has clicked it back to 9, uh, so now he can go the beans. I think he is folding some of the time, uh, but, you know, in any case, he's uh, sort of a loosey-goosey player, so... And he does fold, so that that's exactly the dynamic I was talking about. Um, but we did have 8s, so, I mean... It's not really like we had, uh, you know, our pants down. I mean... Um, so the double barrel bottom right worked. Uh, so, you know, if we had had deuces or something, I mean, that would have been a bit... That would have been taking advantage, I think, of that mentality a bit more, that metagame where he has stepped up and said, okay, you've three-bet me again. Uh, I'm going to have to put a stop to this with a four-bet. And then we smack his face with a five-bet, and then he feels completely owned and folds, which is, is fantastic because we do like owning people. Uh, but we did have eights, so it wasn't really owning. If we had pocket deuces, it would have been a bit of owning going on. <clears throat> Since we kind of read his mind. <clears throat> yeah, bottom left, uh, I was just thinking, I mean, he just calls flop and then dong bet's turn. So, I don't know. He's probably got a ha decent hand, just trying to get some value, I guess. Just calls a flop, thinks we might check back turn bets. <clears throat> love a coffee about now, but I'm just I'm trying to cut down on the caffeine and the jelly beans. You can see them over there looking at me. Um, yeah, I mean, we could do either here, we can call, uh, we can, we can three bet. <clears throat> but this is a flop we wanted, and uh, this guy's been loosey-goosey <clears throat> so far. Not many hands, uh, but he has been a bit of a loosey-goosey player, so I'm just going to call now and hope that he just barrels. And um, obviously a pretty good turn card. Uh, the thing about calling is we do live in his entire range, and he probably does have a lot of hands that we actually do well against. Don't really want to check jam. I mean, he probably calls with ace jack and ace ten, and he may have picked up clubs and called with that. Ten jack if he's feeling very loose, he may gamble. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of close. Um, I don't really see us folding many rivers though, so it could be argued that maybe getting it on the turn is good. But I, I do think that he is capable of you know kind of bluffing a bit as well. So uh, I did sort of intend to call down. And uh, just hope that he fired away, but we might have missed value, depending on his tendencies. And uh, he had pocket deuces, so we played it pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if he shoves turn, I don't think I'm, I'm actually folding, because... Uh, uh, river, river, I should say. Just because he's been pretty, pretty, like I said, you know, loose, so... Uh, limpy, limpy loo, limpy loo. Shove on you. Kind of pretty close that one, but this guy's just calling out of position. Check calling. He's got, uh, what does check call there? He's Jack. He's five. Sixes. Some stubborn fish hand. <clears throat> and, you know, the bottom left there, you just can't let players check all out of position like that. Uh, and especially since we had a little bit of equity, you know, you must punish them for taking the check call line because, you know, you can't let them get away with it. <clears throat> you got to put them in that uncomfortable position because um, that's what the top players are going to do to us. And we have to inflict that pain on others. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I just don't know here. I mean, it's kind of a tight fold bottom left, but well, I mean, it's actually a very tight fold. Maybe I'm not quite. Am I folding this? Maybe not quite. I don't really know anything about it. Mace 10 suited on the button. You know what? I'm just going to make a nitty fold there. I mean, I'm going to wait and just try and get a bit of information on this player, uh, see what he's doing. I think, you know, obviously we should be defending there because if you're talking about how many, you know, I mean, how often we're opening the button and then how high up in our range Ace 10 suit is, you know, it's an easy call. Uh, but, you know, I think we're sacrificing a little bit of EV there potentially, um, playing very exploitable. From the sense that we're folding way too tight when we're opening button, uh, but you know at the same at the same time, sort of again looking at the tournament, sort of holistically, you know, uh, I think we're going to get good spots. It's only a sixteen dollar fifty buy-in. It's six max, which is my favourite, uh, and uh, we just know nothing about that opponent, and he's just made some massive raise, uh, you know, so. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too tight, actually. Now I think about it more, I'm starting to regret it more and more. <laughs> but, uh, uh, do we go again here? I think we do, actually. 501. He did four betters before. I wonder if he's going to do it again. You know what? I might wait. Yeah, the Ace-10 suited. I mean, it's, it's a huge, it's a, <laughs> it's not a huge lay down, but, uh, uh, in a vacuum, you kind of want to be just calling there, but I just think that we're going to get uh, some pretty good spots against these dogs. You know, it's only a sixteen dollar fifty tawny, and he's made a very large raise. Uh, the SPR and the pots, you know, getting pretty bloated, and we could be dominated. I mean, if he's if he's a player that doesn't re-steal, if he's a player that only raises his hands, you know, mostly on their merits, then he's going to have Ace Ten up, and uh, you know, some maybe pocket eights up. So, you know, if he has a legitimate hand, I mean, a value, a strong value raising range, then we're not doing very well. Uh, but we just don't know what he has. I mean, he could have ace deuce or, you know, king eight. It's too early in the piece to say. Uh, and since I'd only raised to 60 chips, was it? You know, I just decided, look, you know, it's, it's a couple of big blinds and we're still 100 big blinds deep. Uh, <clears throat> before we get heavily invested in a big pot, let me just try and work out if this guy is a sucker or not and uh, what sort of tendencies he might have that we can exploit uh, <clears throat> before we get involved in some huge pot with uh, with a marginal hand, but a hand that's you know high up in our, in our range, obviously, for a button steal. So uh, definitely, normally I would defend, and if you're not defending that range, then obviously you're folding, over-folding significantly, and the players can just 3-bet you relentlessly and you just and just make a huge immediate profit. Uh, that's pretty clear, uh, but uh, you know, despite that, I was just willing to to sacrifice what may even have been some immediate EV in the hand, uh, just to wait to lower the variance, and that is just to wait for a situation where we we know a lot more about this player and what he's doing, and if he's three betting fifteen percent or you know four percent, that's going to make a huge difference to our decision in that spot and give us a much clearer picture of uh, how to respond and what sort of ranges we should be, how we should be adjusting to our opponent and what hands to play and not. And so if we can, uh, I just uh, decided just to make that nitty fold there. Probably not something I'd normally do, but uh, that was my justification for it. And uh, time will tell if that pays off or not. Uh, but uh, you can see we're through the first level now, got through it okay. Uh, I think uh, I feel the engines are running now. so. <clears throat> I've woken up and uh, brain's chugging along, making decisions that seem reasonable at a, I wouldn't say fast, it's probably still a little bit slow, but <laughs> but we're away, so hopefully it'll be a, a good session, and I'll, I'll bring you guys an update uh, a little later in the piece.